Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to talk about a rather unusual um, Socket 478 board. This little Micro ATX ASRock board. Now, it might not look, not look like something special, but there is one little quirk about this board that makes it rather special for 478. And that's its ability to run mobile Pentium 4s. Uh, technically, not all mobile Pentium 4s, but at least the Prescott ones run fine on this. For Northwood, I tried for a long time to find a way to get them to run at full multiplier, but so far couldn't. However, this board, at least on the Prescott chips, runs full multiplier, which means you get some really, really high multiplier CPUs with super binned um, cores so you probably at least I could beat some people on a way better board this one uh, Asus P4C800E that's what I would consider to be the best 478 board out there however it doesn't run the mobile chips on 4 multi it runs them on, I think, X12. Now this little thing here, um, it needs a lot of mods and a lot of intention to get to, well, to get to run decent clocks on, on the mobile chips. Mostly because, let me zoom in, it has this uh, tiny little two-phase VRM. Now that VRM gets hot even with the stock Prescott chips. Like I ran my 3. Uh, I think 3.33 gigahertz mobile chip on here and the VRM got to something like if I remember right 85 degrees in BIOS and over 100 degrees in Windows. So yeah, that's that's not good. But Today I'm going to show you, also this board needs a BSL mod, but I'm going to show you my fully modded example and then talk a bit more about the mods. Now this little monster here is what I did to the board. Now on top here we have a cut up GTX 480 for V-Core and that is definitely sufficient. So I completely replaced the VRM. I'm actually not even going to show you how to do a volt mod on that VRM because it's just going to blow up on you. So don't even bother with this board in general unless you want to e-power it. So you can, there is my little front panel thing here, uh, you can either e-power it, use something proper like e-power 5 if you have one or just cut up GPU. This, this 480 is definitely sufficient. Also I would I'm not sure if I would recommend ePower 5, I would use something like original ePower probably if I had to ePower this with uh, a ePower that's designed for that. But in my opinion, um, cut up GPU is the better way. Also replace some caps on here, as usual, you know the, you know the drill by now. Those are just aluminium polymers all around. Um, however, this board has an interesting quirk. In terms of the volt mods, now the top one here uh, is for memory. Uh, there, it's it's pretty straightforward. You just want your 3.4 volts or more for your. Um, actually, this board might only go up to 3.2. I would have to check uh, to run your wind bonds and stuff. But for the North Bridge, this board actually likes. Um, below stock voltages from my experience, which is a bit odd. Which means the volt mods on here are again not your typical ones, but rather I remove two resistors. Tweezers here, I remove this resistor up here. This is for North Bridge voltage, and there is another resistor right above those IDE slots here. That's um, memory. Anyways, flip it over. Now you can see a wonderful mess of copper plates. Uh, how you connect the e-power is, is up to you. I don't think this is uh, optimal. This is just really quick and dirty 
work from me with the leftover copper plate I had at the time. But you can also see here these two tiny little uh, purple wires, those are the BSL mode. I'm going to show all of those modes of course again on the PC with paint so you can see what is going on. Also note there is, uh, those are not the ideal choice, but those are 470 microfarad uh, post caps, uh, tantalum polymers. Honestly on this board anything is better than stock. Stock it doesn't have anything on here. I also have some probably useless 100 microfarad MLCCs here and here that's um, memory, no that's Northbridge, then here this is also Northbridge, that's my measuring point, the usual uh, Molex, this is memory, the red one, also more, more caps here, that's honestly overkill, I don't think it did anything. Uh, anyways, there is also, let's get it so it doesn't reflect as much, there is also a P4i65GV model. That's different chipset and it doesn't run the mobile chips unless you flash the P4i65G BIOS on there. Uh, mostly that's because it's missing the microcode. I, I already tested on the GV and manually added only the microcode for the press code mobile CPUs and it worked. Uh, however, if you now think getting the Northwood mobile chips to run on here is as easy as just getting the microcode of a Northwood uh, mobile chip out of a, a laptop BIOS and flashing, uh, adding it to a BIOS on this board, uh, yeah, it's not that. That's what I tried already and it did nothing. It still ran at X12. So my current theory is that it has some sort of uh, hardware multi-detection basically. So it, it, it has a so it has an energy saving mode and there's probably one of the reserved pins doing some function where uh, it basically switches the CPU to full multi. I still have to find out what this is all about and I might make a video about that in the future. I have a, um, a Northwood 3.16 gigahertz uh, hyperthreading chip in a no notebook motherboard that runs and that I can probe on. So I still haven't given up hope which is probably stupid on my side but anyways there might be a video on that in the future sometime. Now let's leave off here and show you the actual mods. Now again I would not suggest using this board for well using this board with rather the stock VRM on here. That's just asking for trouble and with this board it's it's a kind of a curious case. Usually if you have your your P4C800E here, um, the chips you're going to run on here are usually way, way, way cheaper than the board. However, because the mobile chips are rather rare, they're actually way, way more expensive than the board because especially the, these ASRO boards, they can be found for, uh, I've, I've picked up this one here, uh, it was for free. Uh, this one here was uh, five bucks plus shipping. So that's, again, it might be different in your market, but don't pay more than 10 euros for any of these. They are pretty common boards. Uh, and that's the reason why I would say I'd rather try to e-power it and like if you have, once you have it e-powered, of course boot it up with the disposable CPU first to see what happens. And after you know it works with the e-power, you can run um, your priced socket uh, 478 mobile chips. Now, again, I, I don't know how these VRMs fail. Uh, so far I haven't intentionally pushed them too far. So just be safe. If they fail on the high side, obviously 12 volts, not even Pentium 4 survives that unfortunately. 
So anyways, that's it and I'm going to show you the more detailed mods now on the computer. Okay, here we are. So let's start off with memory. For memory you have to remove this 470 ohm resistor here and replace it with I would suggest using uh, 1 kilo ohm but you can also use 2 kilo ohm variable resistor so like this and like this so I say 1 kilo ohm for now and set it to 470 ohms to start out. So you have your stock VMAM of about 2.6 volts. Then you can go all the way up to 3.2 with this, uh, which is probably enough considering the board is not really well, doesn't really like wind bonds that much. So you're probably going to run TCCD on here or something else. So keep that in mind. Now for North Bridge, you have to remove this one. That's A1 kilo ohm. This now. Now here you can in theory also use a 1 kilo ohm, but I would suggest using a 2 kilo ohm. Because this board actually, well, at least from my experience, profits from slightly lower North Bridge voltage. Um, my sweet spot was at about 1.65 volts. So let's add this here. It's 2 kilo ohms. You can also probably run something like uh, 1 kilo ohm and, and 500 ohms in series if you, if you don't have 2 kilo ohms. So set this to... Uh, one kilo ohm to start off with, so you have your stock voltage, uh, probably around 1.8 volts or so. They they run pretty high volt, uh, North Bridge voltage surprisingly. Um, anyways, that's that's about it for the two volt mods. Uh, for the measuring points, I would suggest just watching the video, uh, like the video where I show the actual board. Um, there. You can see that um, my red wire is, I think, connected to memory and the yellow one connected to the north bridge. So, because I can't really show any measuring points on the front of the board, at least not on this image, easily. So, grab them on the back from the capacitors. Now, let's continue to the BSL mod. There we are zoom this in quite a bit like this and now I actually have to do some counting now your two BSL pins are they are in this line and one two three up so this one is a BSL pin this one is a BSL pin now, for this BSL mod, I'm, I'm not going to go into technicalities because basically for me it was just switching stuff around and and stuff working even though the BSL I set in theory wouldn't have been the right one. So I'm, I'm just going to draw uh, my, my jumper setup here and leave it at that. So what I have here is one line out here from this one, split it, say you have two switches basically, which to one side is round. Now you don't have to use switches obviously, It's uh, in my case it's just a jumper with the the middle post being the BSL pin and the outer posts being your ground and your V core here. So this this side is uh this is just V core. That's V core. Uh you can grab V core from here 
here that's v core um the, the whole whole like this uh reinforcement solder on the pcb is also v core uh ground opposite capacitor pads for example any ground on the board will do some of those one of those is also uh going to be ground but i'm not sure which one so i'm not going to draw it in here and you're basically going to do the same thing for this one switch it's too ugly switch uh, switch here switch here ground here and there yeah same thing here here v core So, um, basically, in, th in, in theory, the optimal setting for this should be uh, the 200 FSB strap. So, actually, let me quickly pull up a document and show you what I mean. Okay, so it took me a while to find this, uh, so I decided to put a cut here and... Here we are. Now, unfortunately, the website is in Russian, but that shouldn't really matter because all we want is to look at these combinations here, actually. Pictures as I can zoom in. Doesn't do anything, okay? Anyways, uh, all, all we really need here is to jumper our board to the 200 setting. So... This inner pin here, we jump to V core, the outer pin to ground, and that's done. That's that's how I ran my board. I think it ran just fine as well in the 166 setting. Now the 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 mobile Pentium 4s have a stock FSB of 133, so that's basically the the important part that you get uh, something higher than 133 just just go straight to 200 and you're probably fine anyways that's that's basically the the science you can say behind this uh not not really that much to it as as with the Ashrock 4 core dual i'm i'm not going to put as much effort into this one either because well i i could probably trace out Alternative, let's go back to our um, BSL board here. Uh, I could probably trace out alternative uh, points on the board where the BSL can be found. But in this case, I think it's it's rather easy to just do it in, on the back of the socket. Just attach a small wire here and here and set up your jumper so you can go back to uh lower lower bsl settings especially for higher higher memory multipliers because on this board the memory multipliers you get in bios uh depend on on your bsl setting more or less so that's about it for the board obviously the big one is uh you have to e-power it and after that i hope the mods i showed you help you get further Anyways, that's it. Bye-bye.